my friends. It is good to be together again, uh, although we are all separated uh, still. But it is still very good to be gathered together here in this virtual space online. This week, I wanted to invite you, if you haven't already made a video of yourself greeting uh, us here at Bread of Life, please do that. Um, you know, you can say, hey, how are you? You can say, happy Easter. You can say, God's peace be with you. Just some greeting for one another. Um, and then send that to me. Uh, and there's lots of different ways you can get it to me. You can send it by email. You can put it on Facebook. You can ask a friend, how do I do this? Um, but get it to me, and then what I'll do is make one long video uh, so that we can share it on Easter Sunday next week already. Um, we'll share that video during our Easter Sunday gathering time. Uh, I likely will plan to have um, that show up on our Facebook and our YouTube account starting at around 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and then repeat it as much as I need to um, until 10.30 when we begin worship. So I want to uh, continue or encourage you to continue to provide your financial support to Bread of Life. Um, as we've talked about in the last couple of weeks, even though we're separated, we still have costs for our building, we still have costs for our staff and different things that we have to take care of paying. And so if you, um, if you send a check regularly to, or bring a check regularly to worship in person, please send that to Bread of Life. And the address will be available in the comments uh, for this um, video. And again, uh, I've been saying this all along, but I want to repeat it uh, to say, please reach out to one another. Take a few moments to just check in. You can BP, call somebody, send a text message. Maybe you use a, a video app, something like Marco Polo. Uh, perhaps you're on Facebook. You can send a note, a message, write a card, send that to somebody and check in with one another. It's really important. It's really important. We've been staying at home, trying to slow down the spread of the coronavirus so that we don't all get sick all at one time. And um, as we do that, it can feel very lonely. So please, please take time to connect with one another. Uh, this today is Palm Sunday. This is the day when we remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Uh, we will be doing some uh, different things in worship today uh, compared to the other weeks, um, just as we would if we were here in person. And one of those things um, is to wave a palm branch. Uh, so maybe you have some greens in your home. Maybe you don't and you just want to make a path on the floor. Uh, Jesus rode on a donkey and people threw their coats and their cloaks on the ground. So that's a possibility. If you don't have something green to wave around, you can put your coats on the floor and just have a parade. Um, so we will be doing that today in worship together. You might be marching around your living room all by yourself, but you're not alone because we're all going to be doing that. And then at the end of this week, on Friday, we will have uh, Bread of Life's normal Lenten, um, no, Holy Week services, uh, where we celebrate Monday, Thursday into Good Friday. And it will look very different this year, but it will still be similar in the um, mood. And so I encourage you to save time on Friday, 6 p.m. Plan to be involved in worship on Friday evening. Uh, 
uh, that will that worship service will also be online. We won't be in person yet for that. So um, again, it'll be online, just like this worship service. Just a reminder uh, that both Dorothy and I are available um, through email or text message or BP if you want to check in. If you just need to talk to somebody and call and say, I'm going crazy here at home all by myself. What are you doing? Um, call. Send an email. Let us know. We're available. And then just a reminder that we will not be celebrating communion until we are together again in person. Um, this it will be like a fast. It's like going without something that's really important to us. It is important. Communion is. And through it, we experience God's grace. And at the same time, we experience God's grace in many other ways. Maybe it's through something a friend has shared with you. Maybe in that moment, you experience God's grace. Maybe it's something you noticed when you were out on a walk. just hit you, touched your heart. God's grace shows up for us every day, many times through the day. And so as we wait to have communion until we are together in person again, I wonder how you notice God's grace with you and for you every day. When you notice those things, please take a moment to share with someone. Send me a note. Hey, Pastor, this is what I noticed. This is how God showed up for me today. Maybe your story will show up in worship soon. So please let me know. Okay, a couple logistic things before we enter into worship. Just as we've done in other weeks, uh, as Wendy and I trade places, we'll try to be sure to indicate that that's happening, just so you know uh, where we're going to be moving and things like that. And then because today is a special day, we're going to bring in the cross, we'll bring in the Bible, and we'll bring in the light. And as you see the light coming in um, to light our Christ candle and lighting up our, um, our Lenten candles, uh, I ask that you light your candles at home at the same time. Because that's when we'll be sharing the light of Christ today. So with that, let us enter into worship.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. We will Lord to save us. We sincerely ask that the Lord to let us win. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you from here in the house of the Lord. The Lord is our God and God has given us light. Start the celebration. March with palm branches all the way to the altar. The Lord is my God. I, I will praise my God and tell how thankful I am. Tell the Lord how thankful you are because God is kind and always merciful. Let us pray. Lord, we continue in this Lenten journey and we are not sure if we are ready. It would be easier to stay in our safety and comfort zone. Help us to look within and to look beyond ourselves. Give us hearts of courage and strength for the tasks which lie ahead. Be with each one of us in this strange time when we need to be separated. Allow us to experience your peace which passes all understanding. Help us notice hope during this Lent. And encourage us to share that hope with others. Cleanse our spirits and help us follow you we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I've done in the previous weeks, I want to set up a couple of introductory comments about our gospel lesson um, so that it helps us kind of get centered uh, helps us remember what have we been talking about and what do we expect uh, as we go forward. So today's story in the gospel is a little bit like a flashback uh, because today we're in chapter 11. We're going back to the days before Jesus arrived in Jerusalem. Because Jesus arrived in Jerusalem and then a week later it was uh, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. And uh, there's a lot that happened, so we needed to take time to study all of those things that happened in Jerusalem. And so this story, the story of Jesus arriving in Jerusalem, comes right after the story about Bartimaeus. So do you remember this story? The story about Bartimaeus, he is a, a blind man. He was sitting at the side of the road. And he was crying out very loudly. Uh, he was calling Jesus, Son of David, help me. Show mercy. Now, the name, the title that Bartimaeus was using, Son of David, that was a political title that indicated 
that Jesus would be challenging Herod, would be challenging the Roman government. So Bartimaeus knows what God is up to. God shows mercy. And he also was um, creating a challenge for Jesus. Now, I don't know if you recall, but when Bartimaeus was running to Jesus, he threw off his cloak. He throws it off onto the ground. And it seems like maybe a number of others joined in with Bartimaeus. They threw their cloaks on the ground. They threw their blankets on the ground to make a path for Jesus as Jesus went into Jerusalem. As Jesus goes into Jerusalem, he rides on a small donkey. And it's important for us to notice that because a donkey is a service animal. It's an animal that works. It's not some beautiful, glorious kind of show animal like a white horse or something like that. A big, beautiful horse would be the symbol of a proper king. And instead, our Lord Jesus comes into Jerusalem on a donkey. This symbol that Jesus on a donkey, this is not what we expect from a king or a Messiah. Jesus is not hiding what he does. His proclamation of the kind of Messiah, the kind of God that he is, is a humble one coming in on a donkey. And now, the reading of the Gospel from Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Jesus and his disciples reached Bethany, near the Mount of Olives. When they were getting close to Jerusalem, Jesus sent two of them on ahead. He told them, go into the village. As soon as you enter it, you will find a young donkey that has never been ridden. Untie the donkey and bring it here. If anyone asks why you are doing that, say the Lord, the master of the donkey, needs it and will soon bring it back. The disciples left and found the donkey tied near a door that faced the street. When they were untying it, some of the people standing there asked, why are you untying the donkey? They told him what Jesus had said, and the people let him take it. The disciples led the dis the donkey to Jesus. They put some of their clothes on its back and Jesus got on. Many people spread clothes on the road while others went to cut branches from the field. In front of Jesus and behind him, people were along shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna for God in heaven above. After Jesus had gone to Jerusalem, he went into the temple and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went back to Bethany with the 12 disciples. Here ends the gospel reading. Today is Palm Sunday. 
and it is a time to celebrate and honor Jesus. Now, first, I would like to show you two words and have you identify if they are, if the meaning is the same or different. Give up and surrender. Now, in sign language, the signs are very similar, but the meanings are a little bit different. So give up. The sign for that is to give up, to be done with it. And inside you might feel emotional, feel some stress or anger, irritation or fear or worry. That involves a lot of emotions. Surrender. Now this is the sign for surrender, but it also means to offer up, to give up. Now today with the coronavirus, there are many people who are giving up a lot of things such as not being able to go to the restaurant or to movies or to be out in public. And as a society, we are not used to the changes that are needing to take place. And people are also having to surrender more now than they've had in the past. For example, there are people who are willing to surrender food to help others and to offer up what they have. There are some, some people who are willing to surrender or to offer up uh, making homemade masks for the medical personnel. And currently the restaurants and the bars are closed, but the staff who work there are willing to offer up to uh, bring food out to other people and to deliver. And they're willing to give up their time for the sake of others. I'd like to share a, a story that had happened. There was a woman who had parked near the grocery store and as she was walking through the parking lot, she saw an older couple sitting in their car and they were yelling out, can you help us? So she went to them and they said, could you go get groceries for us? We've been yelling for someone for 45 minutes and you're the first person that has come to help us. So they gave her some money. Uh, they rolled down their window a little bit and they gave her some money through the window. She went and shopped for groceries for them. They opened the trunk of their, their car and she placed the groceries in the trunk of her car. And they told her that they were very grateful for her assistance. So this woman had surrendered and offered up her time to help out this elderly couple. Another example, was there was a woman who was shopping in the grocery store and she had a large package of toilet paper in her cart. She saw an older woman who was trying to reach for some toilet paper at the top of the shelf and was unable to reach it. And while doing so, another customer came by, grabbed it off the shelf and took off. So this woman witnessed the whole thing. And after she uh, purchased her groceries and her items, she met with this elderly woman out in the parking lot and she opened up the large package of toilet paper that she had and she gave her half of the contents. And the woman was touched by this act of kindness. And here this woman was willing to surrender and to offer up what she had. And so this is very touching. And, and this was done from, this was given to this woman from her heart. So many medical personnel, doctors and nurses are also offering up their life to help save others. 
And so it's important that we give honor and respect to the medical personnel who are putting their lives in the line of fire. During Passover, which takes place on a yearly basis, in today's gospel, you know, King Herod would typically write or would ride on a horse as a king would do. Whenever they entered the city, they would ride a majestic horse to display their power. However, when Jesus arrived in the city, many had expected that Jesus would also come in riding on a majestic horse. But they were taken aback that he did not come on a horse, but on a humble donkey. And the people at that time saw Jesus as their Messiah or as a worldly leader. But God had other plans. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And the donkey symbolizes peace. And this was part of God's plan. And how do we know that this is God's plan? It was written in Zechariah. Everyone in Jerusalem, celebrate and shout. Your king has won a victory. And he is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on the colt of a donkey. And Jesus fulfilled that pro prophecy. And this was a, a part of God's plan. Jesus surrendered his life for all people in the world. I noticed that uh, during Holy Week that there are seven different types of stories or scenarios that have taken place that allude to surrender. Jesus knew that he would suffer in Jerusalem. He was aware of this ahead of time. And yet he was willing to surrender and offer his life up and to go forward into Jerusalem and not turn back. Another example of this was when a woman appeared to Jesus and he, she knelt at his feet and had brought in a jar of perfume and poured it out to wash his feet. And she willingly surrendered this expensive oil to honor Jesus. And then there, there's the other example of the night when Jesus prayed in the garden and he knew what he was about to face would be painful and would lead to death. And he, he did not seek to avoid this experience, but he accepted God's plan for him. And then when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, he willingly went with them and surrendered himself to them. And then he was persecuted by the soldiers. And then when the soldiers placed him on the cross, 
and crucified him by putting nails through his hands and feet, he willingly surrendered his life. And then ultimately, Jesus surrendered and offered his life upon the cross for all of the people throughout the world. And today we remember what Jesus sacrificed and personally surrendered his life for all of us, and we give him honor. And so this week, I encourage you to pray the Lord's Prayer on a daily basis. And the Lord's Prayer also talks about surrender. And it talks about offering up, up to God. And so remember what Jesus has offered up. And uh, we'll be praying the Lord's Prayer together shortly. God, at this time we lift up prayers for people who are sick with coronavirus and people who are sick with many other things. It's a scary time to be sick, unsure of um, medical supplies and all of those different things. Provide comfort and care to those who are ill. God, we also pray for medical workers, people who work in the emergency rooms, people who work um, as EMTs on the ambulance and with the fire department. We pray for nurses and doctors. We pray for technicians who know how to use equipment. Steady their hands. Give them wisdom and give them an extra measure of protection from this virus. And we also pray for our teachers and students experiencing school in a very different way for most everyone. We ask for endurance for teachers and students and parents. We ask for extra focus and attention. We ask for extra patience and kindness in our families and in our homes. And please, Lord, help everyone get food. Help us care for one another the generosity of our finances and of our resources so that kids can eat. God, we pray for our military uh, members, personnel, people who are here in the United States serving and taking care of others, as well as members of the military who are overseas, away from their families, helping to provide security for the United States and the whole world. Be with them in these difficult days of um, being separated from one another. God, we pray for our leaders, leaders in the government, leaders in our towns, leaders in our states, leaders in our churches. Help them listen to the wise counselors that are around them. Help them care, put the care of their people as their top priority. Give them endurance for all the decisions that they still have to make 
going forward. And we pray, God, for this community here at Bread of Life, Death Lutheran Church. Please, God, help us be intentional to stay in touch with one another. Help us try new uh, ways of communicating, ways that keep us connected to one another as we um, wait until the day we are together again. For these prayers and the many, many more that we lift up, we pray in Jesus' name. And now let us pray. Let us pray for all people of God and their needs. Merciful God, help us to know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. Turn our attention towards others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the time in our uh, worship service when we collect the offering or when we prepare uh, to send our offering in to uh, the church. And I ask, um, or just remind you, the reason that we give an offering is because God has given us a purpose. God has called us for a particular reason and we are the ones who are given that job. God asks us to share the good news of God's love with, with deaf people and their families. So we gather together to do that, to uh, um, receive God's call and to work with God and with one another to figure out how are we gonna do that. And one of the ways that we do that, one of the ways that we worship God is we say, your call is something that we're paying attention to. And the way that we pay attention well as people is when we give up some of our money. When we give some of our money, we let go of that money and we take hold of some other ideal. The money becomes less important. The goal, the ideal becomes what is more important to us. Also, when we let go of some of our money, we let go a little bit at least of the illusion that we're fine on our own. And we have now experienced separation from one another for a good long time, and there's more yet coming, we begin to appreciate the message that no, we can't survive on our own. We need one another. We need one another. And so 
Again, when we give a little bit of our money, we practice admitting, I can't, I can't do this by myself. We trust one another more, and we trust God more. So, you are invited to share your offerings with Bread of Life, to send them in to the church as an act of your worship, as an act of trust, as a proclamation that together we, with God, can do impossible things. Let us give God our gifts. When you open your hands, Lord, we are filled with good things. May these gifts be signs of our gratitude and the love which embraces all your children. Amen. The time of Lent demonstrates how much God loves the world and how much God loves you. In this holy time, we slowly put out the Lenten candle. In the next three weeks, the lights will go out there will be more darkness than light. We are retelling the story of Jesus' betrayal, suffering, and death. So why this story? So that God's love is revealed. God's love is revealed in surprising ways. humble with us. Using that love and power of love to lift up people, not to put them down. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge our mistakes and sins. We acknowledge when we ignore our good God. We acknowledge when we ignore or hurt our neighbors. We acknowledge that we need God's promise of abundant life. Let us pray. 
God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us to put our trust in you. Amen. Please stand if you are able. And now for the blessing. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, to love and serve others. And all together, be safe.